Okay, we're going to work on this uh, project uh, uh, pivot lock. And uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, after we create the model, we're going to have dimensions. And also, if you notice that we have some tolerancing to add these holes. So this is the subject of the next uh, chapter on your textbook, which chapter nine. We will begin to add in dimension and tolerancing. So on this assignment, you will learn how to use inventor features to add tolerancing and also add in the counterbore hole, as you see on this one. So these are uh, pretty uh, new for uh, our project and rest of the feature you have already have been working on those. So the only thing new on this project is the uh, adding the tolerancing and also adding the counterbore hole perhaps. That would be something new and most of the other functions you have already learned. So the first thing we're going to think about this strategy, let's start with this uh, um, perhaps the top view. Let's try using that method. There are however other methods you may use the front view. If you do the front view, make sure you calculate to the up to the center here. Then we can come back at this feature. But I'm going to begin with the top view. So this is the approach I'm going to take for this project. Let's start with the selection of the plane. In this case, I will select the XZ plane because I'm going to work on top view. So right away, I'm going to switch to the isometric view. So I see my orientation what direction I'm going to make this circle and the rectangle probably would be a better choice here. And then just to do some rough sketch and back to the top view. Add dimensions. The center to this line is 4.5. The size of this uh, circle is which is given radius of 1.5. So I'm going to trim this one first, so I can have directly the radius dimension. So it would be 1.5. So we do have, also we don't need this line, we can delete that. So with this information, so of course this is not quite Right at this point, we need to add the relations, tangent relations there, and that hopefully would fix the problem. And now we have one dimension is still needed. Let's see what we have. We have, oh, let's see. I would dimension this again. Delete dimension from this origin to the line rather than just the selected line. This way we have connection to the origin and still is adding for needing for more dimension. Let's see tangent already tangent. We have this radius and perhaps we have no constraint on the horizontal directions. Let me see if that's the case. It seems like um, shouldn't need another dimension based on knowing the center and having these uh, tangent relations. I don't expect to have another need for any other dimension. Let's just figure out it could be some problem on this area. Actually, I don't see anything. Let me go back, turn off these constraints and ask for help from other dimension see what is the indicating okay there is issue here we don't need that dimension let's see i have already 4.5 so that tells me something here i'm going to remove that and not accept them always be careful that do not accept something unnecessary dimension so that means our relation is not correct here so either it could be um, some overlap or gap or maybe let's try the parallel that is not the case yeah all right all right that seems like is the issue let me extend this and 
Okay, that was a small gap there. It was hard to see. Now, finish the sketch. Extrude. Uh, the maximum height on this one is two. And then we select the front face and start new sketch. On this sketch, I'm going to create another rectangle on this corner first, from starting from that corner, approximate location there, adding the dimensions. Uh, and this one I have 1.125. 1 and dimension on this side, we have three inches. Okay. Meantime, I can do another rectangle, selecting approximately to the left. You can extend a little bit extra piece here. And then what's important here, we make sure that this is in the right location, right size. But this part, since we're going to remove the material by using the extrude cut, you don't want to be exactly on this edge of that arc. So let's try add some, uh, just a dimension, any length for this one is fine. But it's important to make sure that we do have some correct relations location-wise. So we know that is 0.75 from this line. If you notice on the drawing, we do have this dimension that has to be precise. It's 0.75. That's three quarters. Also, we do know that this dimension, this edge to this line, is 0.625. So we have those two dimensions, and we need to have one more dimension between this line here, which is 0.75. So it looks like we have fully constrained. So we got two sketches. Just again, this extra piece here I have is not critical because we are going to use extrude cut. And you don't want to be, again, exactly drawn. All right, finish the sketch. So this is the situation we have. Extrude by selecting both pieces. Selecting cut all. Cut all. And that takes care of our model, the, the base. And then there are other features that we are going to come back to this face. And then we can draw a circle on this one, selecting the midpoint precisely. And adding that dimension, which is given 0.625 radius, which would be double that, would be 1.25 diameter. Point six to five times two point point two five and finish sketch at this point. I'm not going to add anything on this right now. Um, for that hole, uh, we are going to use the counterbore hole using the hole feature. So let's do the circle. Uh, extrude cut and cut all. We do have uh, one fillet here. We create that by using the fillet, selecting the radius 0.25. And select the edge. That takes care of that part. Okay, now this is the part that I'm going to create using the hole feature. Uh, for this one, we could use just circle and cut, but since we're going to use the hole for this one, um, first of all, let's go back to this sketch and talk about this. We, on the dimension in section on chapter seven, we had a brief discussion on type, uh, different types of the hole, which in this case, um, we have, this shows diameter of, 
uh, 0.5 and with the tolerancing and underneath you have this symbol remember that symbol is the counter bore uh, symbol and diameter of 0.875 and after that you have another symbol there which is uh, showing let me see if I can zoom this a little bit you can see better um, so the first one is the diameter of the hole which goes all the way through and the second line you see the symbol is the um, counter bore symbol and after that whatever number that you see with the symbol for diameter is 0.875 is the size of this larger circle so to speak is the counter bore uh, dimension or diameter and then the next symbol is the depth and depth refers to the how far this counter bore uh, depth is is 0 0.25 0 0.25 which you cannot see that depth on this view rather you can see on the front view refers to this depth here from here to here is 0.25 so in, in dimensioning we do not dimension three times so it's important to understand this how the machinist would know exactly what you are saying on this one because we have they have training on this they understand once you dimension that so you don't add three different dimensions showing one for depth one for size of this circle one size of the circle now the question could be which one we point out to that doesn't uh, um, is that important which one it uh, some drawing they show from smaller circle normally from the larger one when we go to the dimensioning i will show you that okay let's uh, stop here and go back to models sele selecting the hole <clears throat> the key thing here is the select the right hole in this case you see this is a counter bore hole and this is a spot face between the difference between these two are just the depth on the spot face depth is not identified normally it's one eighth of an inch here we have a counter bore that's what we're going to define that and now uh, just uh, and this little illustration tells us which one in this our case our example that we are using is that this one is going to be um, 0.5 and just uh, at this point don't worry about that tolerance in just use the base which is half inch 0.5 exactly and this diameter here that shows is the counterbore diameter, which is our, our example shows 0.875. And depth is pretty much the same as ours, 0.25. So you have these three values, 0 0.875, 0 0.25, and 0.5. And now we are going to select the location for this one. And you're going to pick this edge to show as soon as you pick this edge it's going to ask you for what location 1.5 from located from this line after that you pick this edge which is shown here as 1.7 and apply okay that takes care of see the hole this is very uh, clear here that what we had the depth remember that 0.25 and the size of the large circle and the small circle are defined in one step so that's a nice feature so you don't have to draw two different circle and extrude now back to hole again we have another one here and that one is just a normal hole i want to switch back to that one now we need to go back to this one none and then point uh rather one not point five for one and then pick this uh, face and then add the relations concentric because we do have the same center for this one that's no other dimensions are necessary so okay it seems like that completes our assignment uh, for modeling part and of course we will add the material according to instruction and your textbook doesn't ask for any but i think i have something on canvas that i ask you to assign to um, 
So we pretty much we have completed this particular assignment, uh, modeling parts. Now the next step, the next video, I'm going to show you how to add the video. Uh, on the next video, I'm going to ask you how to add dimensions and tolerancing. And I believe I have stainless steel as a material here. Yeah, perhaps we could add that and then add the annotation information. Um, we will go to model high properties, physical, and ask for stainless steel. Okay, I'm going to stop here and then you will add the annotation information here. Okay, and still, still, okay, I got that. All right, that completes our modeling part of this project. And on the next video, again, we start dimensioning. See you on the next video.